and welcome everyone to morning prayer from St. James Cathedral. Uh, today, March the 10th, we commemorate um, the first primate of our church here in Canada, Robert McRae. I'll say a bit about him as we commemorate his, um, his, his day, his life and ministry in Canada. He became the first primate of the Anglican Church of Canada in 1893. And as we honor him, we also commemorate the formation of our church here in Canada, independent of independent in member in the Anglican communion. McCray was a Scot, born and raised as a Presbyterian. We wouldn't hold it against him. <laughs> From an early age, he showed great talent at the, as a mathematician. And after studies in the University of his native Aberdeen, he went south on a scholarship to Cambridge University. It was there that he became an Anglican, granted a fellowship, then ordained priest. He seemed to be slated for the career of an academic clergyman. But in 1865, much to his surprise, he was chosen to become the second bishop of Rupert's land. He arrived at Winnipeg in August of the same year. McCray's diocese included much of the Arctic as well as the Canadian prairies. He set himself two long range goals. First, to nurture higher education in Manitoba and second, to, defy, to divide Rupert's land into smaller dioceses, which would be better able to serve Anglican settlers and carry out missionary work. One of his first acts as bishop was to call a clergy conference, which he patiently developed into a full, a full fledged synod. In time, as McCray's wider plans matured, this body became the basis for a provincial synod. Under his leadership, the Western synods led the way in calling for unification of the Anglican Church of Canada. The movement bore fruit in 1893, when the first general synod of our church met here in Toronto. McCrae was elected primate as at the semi seminal gathering. He, maintained, he remained primate as well as Archbishop of Rupert's Land until his death in 1904. McCray was a tireless worker with a geni genius for organization. It may be no surprise that he liked to relax by solving mathematical puzzles. <laughs> this sounds like someone morning knows very well as <laughs> this, 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 this chat. <laughs> but he also possessed a generous heart and was able to work well with a wide variety of people. His vision, integrity, and practical wisdom make him one of the true founders of the church of the, in this nation. I must say, as I, read, as I read it last night, I was thinking of calling <laughs> in, so, in so many ways. <laughs> Good for you. Okay. Let us pray then. No one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father, Lord, and to the Son, to the Son and to the, and Holy, to the Spirit. Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Oh, come, let us worship. Divinity. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God. And a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. And the heights of the hills are his also. 
The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Oh, oh come. come, let us worship. A reading from the book of Genesis we're reading this morning from the 39th chapter. Now Joseph was taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man. He was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. He made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and with him there, he had no concern for anything but the food he ate. Now, Joseph was handsome and good looking. And after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, with me here, my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my hand. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except yourself, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her. One day, however, when he went into the house to do his work, and while no one else was in the house, she caught hold of his garment, saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled outside, she called out to the members of her household and said to them, see, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. He came in to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And when he heard me raise my voice and cry out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Then she kept his garment by her until his master came home and she told him the same story, saying the Hebrew servant whom you have brought among us came into me to insult me. But as soon as I raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. When his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him saying, this is the way your servant treated me, he became enraged. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. He remained there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. He gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph care all the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer paid no heed to anything that was in Joseph's care, because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord make it, made it prosper. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 50, we read the psalm responsively by whole verse. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above, to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal fol 
followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the, right, the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel. I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I will take no bull calf from your stalls, nor he goat out of your pens. For the beasts of the forest are mine, the herds in their thousands upon the hills. I know every bird in the sky, and the creatures of the fields are in my sight. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall honor me. But to the wicked, God says, why do you recite my statutes and take my covenant upon your lips? Since you refuse discipline and toss my words behind your back. When you see a thief, you make him your friend and you cast in your lot with adulterers. You have loosed your lips for evil and harnessed your tongue to a lie. You are always speaking evil of your brother and slandering your own mother's son. These things you have done and I kept still and you thought that I am like you. I have made my accusation. I have put my case in order before your eyes. Consider this well, you who forget God, lest I rend you and there be none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. But to those who keep in my way will I show the salvation of God. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of glory. You call us to give up all our vain attempts to reach you and to come before you in thanksgiving for your great salvation shown to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are discerned spiritually. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. <laughs> For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as a spiritual people, but rather as a people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh." For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? Who then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, 
and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, the work of each builder will become visible. For the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each has done. If what has been built on the foundation survives, the builder will receive a reward. If the work is burned, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only through fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we offer our prayers and prayers this day, I invite your intercessions and thanksgivings. pray for all who are sick, um, remembering especially Mary, Jennifer, Juliet, and all those on our hearts. Davy. pray for the Anglican Church of Canada, and particularly for Linda, our primate, for the Council of General Synod, for the General Secretary and for those who work at the General Synod. Let us pray. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church wrote the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, and in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those preparing baptism in a parish and community, to be recognized and admitted to the Catholic community on Sunday, for Claire and for the teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace, for peace in the whole world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the work the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you instructed the heart of Robert McRae to guide the Anglicans of this nation in the councils of peace and unity. Preserve us in wisdom and lead us in truth that we may build upon the one foundation, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now 
and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, but did not sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in submission to your Spirit, that as you know our weakness, so we may know your power to save through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we continue our prayer for peace in Eastern Europe, thinking of those who have been con constantly bombarded for those who have suffered injury, even death, for the mothers who have had to flee as they were expecting, expecting mothers as the bombs fell around them. For those who are exposed to constant danger as they seek refuge amongst the falling bombs and missiles. God of infinite mercy, we humbly implore you to look down on the nations now engaged in war. Look in mercy on those immediately exposed to peril. Comfort the Ukrainian people and all who are suffering the effects of the current conflict in their anxiety and fear. We lead the sufferings of the wounded and show mercy to the dying. Remove the causes and occasions of this war and restore peace among the nations through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace enable us to do God's will in every kind of goodness, working in us that which pleases God. Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever.